In the next 17 minutes, I will show you all the common mistakes beginners make in machine learning and how to avoid them. We'll cover everything from data preparation to model evaluation across these five major areas. My name is Tim, and after 10 years as a data scientist and teaching hundreds of students in machine learning boot camps, I've seen every possible mistake you can make. More importantly, I know how to fix them. There's a systematic way to avoid these pitfalls. In 17 minutes, you'll learn how to spot and fix the most critical mistakes that can derail your ML projects. My goal is to help you build better models by learning from others' mistakes instead of making them yourself. Not cleaning your data properly. Let's talk about dirty data. The nightmare that keeps data scientists up at night. You might think a few missing values or outliers won't hurt, but they're like termites quietly destroying your model's foundation. Those duplicate entries, they're silently biasing your results. And those text fields with mixed formats, special characters, and inconsistent spellings, they're turning your feature extraction into a game of chance. Real-world data is messy. Different spellings, features with impossible values, different date formats, or different currencies. Skipping proper cleaning is like building a house on quicksand. Sure, it's faster at first, but you'll spend twice as long debugging mysterious model behavior later. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. No amount of sophisticated modeling can save you from poor data quality. Forgetting to normalize or standardize. Normalization and standardization are crucial steps that many beginners skip. When your features are on different scales, like house price prediction based on square footage versus number of bedrooms, your model can't learn effectively from the data. Think of gradient descent trying to navigate these uneven scales. It's like trying to adjust a microscope and a telescope at the same time. The algorithm struggles to find the right step size, leading to slow training and subpar results. The fix is simple but important. Standardize your features to zero mean and unit variance or scale them between zero and one. This puts everything on an equal playing field, letting your model focus on finding real patterns in the data. Data leakage. Data leakage is when information from your test or validation set sneaks into your training process. It's one of the most dangerous mistakes because it gives you falsely optimistic results that fall apart in production. A common example, pre-processing your entire data set before splitting. If you normalize using statistics from the full data set, you're letting test data influence your training. Your model gets a peek at what it's not supposed to see. The right approach is simple but strict. Split your data first, then pre-process train, validation and test sets separately. Your validation and test sets should be completely untouched until their specific evaluation phase. Class imbalance issues. Class imbalance is when your data set has vastly different numbers of examples for different categories. Think fraud detection. You might have millions of normal transactions, but only dozens of fraudulent ones. If you ignore this imbalance, your model might achieve 99% accuracy by simply predicting normal every time, which is useless in practice. And during training, your model barely gets to learn from the minority class examples. The solution? Use techniques like oversampling the minority class, undersampling the majority class, or synthetic data generation like SMOTE. And always use appropriate metrics that account for class imbalances like precision recall curves instead of just accuracy. More on that later. Not handling missing values correctly. Missing values in your data set can wreak havoc on model performance. Beginners often make two mistakes, either deleting rows with missing values, losing potentially valuable data, or blindly filling them with means or zeros. Each missing value needs the right treatment based on why it's missing. Sometimes it's random, sometimes it's meaningful, like a customer deliberately skipping a survey question. The fix could be imputation using means, medians, or more sophisticated methods like KNN or regression. Remember, missing values themselves might contain information. A missing income field could indicate unemployment. That's a signal, not noise. So if you think the missingness is meaningful, encode it in a new feature, say a Boolean feature called missing field, which itself could be predictive of your target variable. Using wrong metrics. Choosing the wrong metric is a classic trap in machine learning. Accuracy alone can be misleading. Remember the class imbalance example from before. A 99% accuracy on a dataset where 99% are of a single class is not a good model. Accuracy is not the right metric to use. For imbalanced datasets, you need precision, recall, or F1 score. For ranking problems, use metrics like MAP or NDCG. For regression, RMSE or MAE might be more appropriate than R squared. The right metric not only depends on the type of problem, but also on your problem's real-world impact. Always keep the goal of your project in mind. In medical diagnosis, you might care more about avoiding false negatives than false positives. For example, in a diagnostic tool predicting cancer, it's a bigger problem to miss potential cancers than to classify some benign tumors as cancer that can then be quickly ruled out with a second test. Pick metrics that align with your actual goals. Overfitting or underfitting. 
Overfitting happens when your model memorizes the training data instead of learning general patterns. It performs great on training data, but fails on new examples, like a student who memorizes test answers without understanding the concepts. Underfitting is the opposite. Your model is too simple to capture important patterns. It performs poorly, even on training data, like trying to fit a straight line to curve data. The balance lies in model complexity and training time and is at the core of machine learning. I talk about the importance of the bias-variance trade-off in other videos. Check them out. Use techniques like cross-validation, regularization, and early stopping to find the sweet spot. Watch your training and validation curves. If they diverge, you're likely overfitting. Wrong learning rate. Learning rate is a crucial hyperparameter that controls how much your model adjusts its weights during training. Too high and your model overshoots optimal values, possibly diverging. Too low and training crawls along, potentially getting stuck in local minima. Watch for telltale signs. If your loss oscillates wildly, your learning rate is too high. If it barely improves, it's too low. Start with common defaults like 0.01 or 0.001 and consider learning rate schedules that adjust dynamically during training. Poor hyperparameter choices. Hyperparameters can make or break your model's performance. Common mistakes include using arbitrary batch sizes, picking random network architectures, or copying parameters from unrelated problems. These choices need systematic tuning. Use techniques like grid search, random search, or Bayesian optimization to find optimal values. Keep track of your experiments. What works for one dataset might fail for another. However, keep in mind that you can also grid search too much, especially if you don't have a huge dataset. You risk overfitting to your validation set and performing badly on real data. Rather than exhaustively searching every possible hyperparameter combination, use a more strategic approach. Start with a coarse grid of widely spaced values, then zoom in on promising regions with finer granularity, or consider random search, which often finds good solutions more efficiently than grid search. Not using cross-validation. Cross-validation is essential for evaluating model performance reliably. Training and testing on a single split is like judging a chef based on one meal. You might get lucky or unlucky. Instead, use k-fold cross-validation to test your model on different data splits. It shows how your model performs across different subsets of your data, giving you a more realistic estimate of real-world performance. Watch for stratification and classification problems. Ensure each fold maintains the same class distribution as your full data set. Make sure the folds are selected randomly. Train test set contamination. A quick differentiation between contamination and leakage. Data leakage is when test or validation information subtly influences training through indirect means, like scaling features using statistics from all data, or extracting features using information from future timestamps. Train test contamination is more direct misuse, like explicitly using test data for hyperparameter tuning, using test samples for model selection, or training on test data. It's usually a more obvious breach of the train test separation. Train test contamination is worse than data leakage because it compromises your entire evaluation setup. It is not as easy to fix because you will now need a completely new test set as your original test set is no longer valid. Common examples include tuning hyperparameters using test data or performing feature selection on the full data set, including the test set. You end up with optimistic results that don't reflect real world performance. Always keep your test set completely separate. Treat it like a final exam that you can only use once. Using the wrong loss function. Loss functions need to match your problem type. Using mean squared error for classification or binary cross entropy for regression will confuse your model's learning process. Classification tasks typically need cross entropy loss. Regression usually needs MSE or MAE. For specific problems like ranking or object detection, you'll need specialized loss functions that capture the right objectives. Similarly to choosing the right metrics, choosing the right loss function depends on the objective of your problem. Always keep your real world goals in mind. Incorrect feature encoding. Feature encoding is critical for handling categorical variables. Common mistakes include using label encoding for nominal categories, creating false ordinal relationships, or forgetting to encode categorical variables altogether. Consider a color feature with the values red, blue, and green. Label encoding would convert this to red equals zero, blue equals one, green equals two. The problem is that the model now thinks green is greater than blue. It assumes blue is halfway between red and green. These numerical relationships are completely artificial. Colors don't have natural ordering. Text variables need proper encoding, whether one-hot encoding, label encoding, or embedding. Ordinal features should preserve their natural order, and always handle unknown categories that might appear in your test data. As always, keep your real-world goals and intuition in mind when preparing your data. Instead of doing so blindly, this is often more important than using a more powerful algorithm. Not shuffling your data, 
not shuffling your data, can seriously bias model training. If your data set is ordered, like time series or sorted by class, your model learns these artificial patterns rather than true relationships. During batch training, unshuffled data means each batch might contain similar examples, like in this example where agents are clearly grouped by county. This creates unstable gradient updates and poor learning. Always randomly shuffle your training data before creating batches. Memory management issues. Memory management catches many ML beginners off guard. Loading too much data at once, keeping unnecessary variables in memory, or not clearing GPU memory between training runs can crash your system. For large data sets, use batch processing or data generators. Clear model weights and gradients when they're no longer needed. Monitor your memory usage, especially when working with GPUs. Not checking for bias. Model bias appears in many forms. Demographic bias, selection bias in your training data, or bias from imbalanced classes. A model might discriminate based on gender or ethnicity if these biases exist. In training data, like you can see here, where the model has an easier time, both with males and with lighter skinned individuals presumably because the data set contained more examples from those groups. Test your model across different subgroups and scenarios. Check predictions for various demographics and edge cases. Document any discovered biases clearly. Ignoring model assumptions. Each ML algorithm comes with underlying assumptions. Linear regression assumes linear relationships and independent errors, among other things. Naive Bayes assumes feature independence. Violating these assumptions leads to poor model performance. Check your data distributions and relationships. Here are clear examples of ignoring model assumptions. Linear regression. Using it on exponential growth data and expecting good results. Naive Bayes treating New York as independent words, new and York. Time series using regular cross-validation instead of temporal splits, essentially predicting the past using the future. K-means applying it to spiral-shaped data when it assumes circular clusters. KNN, expecting it to work well on high-dimensional data without feature selection or scaling, the fix. Either transform your data to meet assumptions, or choose an algorithm that matches your data's reality. Poor validation strategy. A poor or unclean validation strategy undermines your entire model evaluation. Common mistakes include using single train test splits, not stratifying folds, or leaking validation data into training. Use appropriate cross-validation for your problem type. Time series need temporal splits. User data needs user-based splits, which are randomized and representatively sampled and split. Your validation should mirror real-world conditions and data distributions. Misinterpreting results. Understanding model performance requires looking beyond metrics to examine actual model behavior. While metrics might look good, systematic failures often hide in specific subgroups, edge cases, or when facing real-world data that differs from test conditions. Examine individual predictions, especially errors. They often reveal patterns not visible in aggregate statistics. Look for systematic patterns. Are certain types of errors more common? Do failures cluster around specific conditions? For example, a customer churn model might perform well overall but consistently fail to identify high-value customers at risk of leaving. These insights only emerge through careful error analysis. For example, at first glance, a manufacturing defect detection system seems excellent with 99% accuracy and quality control. However, when we analyze error patterns across different conditions, we discovered a critical flaw. The model's performance plummeted during summer heat waves. While these hot days only represented about 15% of operating time, they coincided with peak production season. During these periods, when factory temperatures exceeded 30 degrees, accuracy dropped to 62%, essentially making the quality control system unreliable exactly when we needed it most. Using complex models too early. Starting with complex models is a common beginner trap. Deep learning isn't always the answer. Actually, it rarely is, especially when simpler models like logistic regression, decision trees, or random forests might work better. Complex models come with significant drawbacks. They need more data to train effectively and prevent overfitting. They require more computing power and longer training times, which increases both cost and development cycles. They're also much harder to interpret and debug. When something goes wrong, it's often unclear why. Plus, they're more challenging to deploy and maintain in production. The best approach is to start simple. Establish a baseline with a basic model like logistic or linear regression. This gives you a clear reference point and often reveals important insights about your data and problem. Then, if needed, gradually increase complexity while measuring if the added complexity actually improves performance enough to justify its costs. Often you'll find that simple models with good feature engineering outperform complex architectures. Remember, many famous Kaggle competitions have been won with well-tuned gradient boosting models rather than deep neural networks. The key is usually in feature engineering and deep problem understanding, not model complexity, not understanding the baseline. 
Let's talk about the baseline model again. A baseline model sets your minimum acceptable performance, like using averages for regression or majority class for classification. Without it, you can't tell if your complex model is actually adding value. When building a house price prediction model, your complex neural network might achieve a $50,000 average error. That sounds impressive, until you realize that simply predicting the mean price of all houses gives you $55,000 error. Similarly, your spam classifier hitting 98% accuracy seems great until you discover that simply marking everything as not spam gets you 97% accuracy. In both cases, your sophisticated models are barely outperforming naive guesses, suggesting you need to rethink your approach. Test simple models first. If a linear regression performs nearly as well as your neural network, you're probably overcomplicating things. A good baseline also helps catch data leakage. If your model seems too good to be true, it probably is. Ignoring domain knowledge. Domain knowledge is crucial yet often overlooked by ML beginners, but even by experts. Technical patterns in data aren't enough. Understanding the business context, industry trends, and subject matter insights helps you build more effective models. Domain experts can help identify or engineer important features, spot data quality issues, and validate whether predictions make real-world sense. Without domain knowledge, you might optimize for the wrong metrics or miss critical constraints in your problem. Consider medical diagnosis model that achieves high accuracy by learning that patients who had their vitals checked hourly were more likely to have severe conditions. A domain expert would immediately recognize this as misleading since hourly checks are a result of severity, not a predictor of it. Or in retail sales prediction, a model might learn that sales drop every Wednesday. But a domain expert would explain that's when inventory updates cause recording delays, not actual sales decreases. These patterns might look valid statistically, but make no real-world sense, showing why domain expertise is crucial for building meaningful models. Poor documentation. Poor documentation is a common mistake that comes back to haunt you. Track your data sources, pre-processing steps, model parameters, and experimental results. When your model misbehaves months later, good documentation helps you understand why. It also improves collaboration with others and makes it easier to pass on work to someone else. Keep clear notes about model decisions and performance metrics. Document your feature engineering steps and any data cleaning rules. Future you or your teammates will thank you. Not version controlling. Similarly to good documentation, version control is essential for ML projects. Without it, you can't track which code changes led to better results, reproduce past experiments, or collaborate effectively with teammates. Track everything. Code, data preprocessing scripts, configuration files, and even model checkpoints. Tools like Git with DVC or MLflow help manage both code and ML artifacts. This was all machine learning beginner mistakes explained. If you are overwhelmed and don't know which algorithm you need, I have videos explaining all ML terms and algorithms for you to check out. If you are just getting started in machine learning, check out my video on how to start learning machine learning. That was it. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to be notified about similar videos in the future.